Hi folks, and welcome back to Aqualo. My name is Lee, and I'm your host. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I was recently approached by two local youth leaders asking if I would be willing to teach some teenagers about the aquarium hobby, particularly about badass. If there's anything I can do to help these youth get off video games, I'm all in. We had a wonderful turnout. About 40 or more people showed up to the event. And at the end of the presentation, I gave away nearly 30 free bettas, hoping that this would be the beginning of their aquarium hobby. Enjoy. So let me kind of share with you guys how I got into this fish nerd stuff. So when I was, uh, uh, by the way, this is the house I grew up in, North Sacramento in the 80s. And Gong uh, Mong Young Man, your branch president lived literally next door. So if I climb up our garage door window, I would be in his backyard. And he and I used to climb this tree. So it was this house that uh, in junior high school, when I was uh, almost 12 years old, my friend named Hugh introduced me to the betta world. And I didn't know anything about betta. I knew that they were like fighting fish. That's all I knew. And um, so I was always, I'm the type of kid that if you give me a toy, I'll open it up and see how it works. And then I'll probably break it after that. So I consist though with my betta. I wanted to breed the betta. So I started breeding bettas and I killed a bunch of bettas. Like, like just kill them, kill them. And I stake up the house and President Yang, my cousin, he can testify to that. I got lectured by my parents, your room stinks like fish sauce. So I never gave up. And after a year of practicing breeding and breeding, I finally bred some ugly looking bettas. And then, because we didn't have money to buy stuff, we just, we got stuff we got for free. So then we started trading with the stores. We would take our bettas to the store, we'll put it in our backpacks and bike to downtown and go to the store and say, hey, you wanna buy bettas from us? We have like 50 of them. And so the stores were of course ripping us off. We were kids, we didn't know that. So they would give us like, we'll give them like 50 for like five bucks worth of stuff, not cash. And then we would start buying heaters and things like that for fish. So that was my story. Now, how many of you have seen bettas in stores before? Or seen bettas, okay. So a lot of people don't know this, but there's actually 143 species kind of types of bettas. Most don't care. They're just like, I, I see these little jarred, fancy looking fish that's almost dead at PetSmart, okay. So, this is a cool species that it's not sold in Walmart, PetSmart, Petco because nobody buys these stuff. They're just not cool. These are like, how many of you know bluegills? These are like bluegills, okay? So, but I think they're cool because I'm a hobbyist, I'm into that. Now, there are two types of bettas. There are mouth brooders and there are bubble nesters. So mouth brooders means, um, the fish will lay the eggs, and then the, the, the dad will then take the eggs, put it in the mouth, hold the eggs until it hatches, hold the baby, and then only release it when there's no danger. As soon as there's danger around, they'll grab up all the babies and put it back in the mouth. So guess what? They don't eat for a week. They starve. And occasionally, they'll swallow one of the babies. So that's mouth brooders. That's not what I work with. So for the past 28 years, I've been breeding bubble nester bettas. And what they do is they, they use their saliva and they build these bubbles on the water. So if you've had bettas before, you'll see bubbles in there sometimes. And then they'll put the eggs up there and the eggs hatch. They'll take care of the babies. All right, so where do bettas come from? Does anyone know? Uh, aren't they originally from Thailand? Yeah, they are. They're from Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia. Okay, yes. Um, they're mostly popular in Thailand because of the the uh, production warehouse industry. So, meaning that's where a lot of it is produced. So, your grandparents and parents, if they're from Laos or Thailand, they know all about this. And chances are, they don't care. The reason why they don't care is it's everywhere. 
like it's in the creek, it's in the levee, it's in the backyard, it's just, they just don't care. Yeah, it's just dirt fish to them. But uh, 150 years ago, Thai people were breeding spada just to fight and to gamble. So one day, a scientist went to Thailand and uh, the king of Thailand gave this scientist from Europe some bettas, like the coolest one he had. The scientist took it back and started breeding them. So there are five species that builds what we call the betta splendid. So betta splendid is what you guys see every day. They didn't just, just so you know, they didn't come out looking nice like that. It took time. There are five species. You don't have to memorize this, but I just want to mention it. There's the splendids, okay? And then most of our mom parents are familiar with this and this, okay? These bettas lived in the northern, western parts of Thailand where all the refugee camps were. So splendids is very popular there. Splendids are mostly red. They're coated with scales on top, and they have no scales on the bottom. They have a big mouth, and they're the most aggressive. So if you were gonna fight a fish, you probably want this guy. But he doesn't have any armor on the body. So if he gets attacked here, he's gonna bleed. So what Thai people were doing was, they were taking an embellus, who's small, but totally coated with armor, mix it with this guy, now he's coated with armor. That's what they were doing. So you have the splendid, you have the mahachai, which is uh, skinny, longer, um, and uh, his, his uh, fins down here don't have any white to it. It's just all green. Not a big deal, but the difference is that the scales on the cheeks are scales like fishes. Okay? You think of fish scales are stacked on top of each other, right? Then there's this Mardina, who is very similar to the mahachai, except, it's going to sound dumb, but except, the scales don't stack on each other, they're like snakes. So you think of snake skin, they're kind of connected to each other, right? They're not on top of each other. So that's the difference. Then you have the uh, Siam and Embellus, who are really small and not as, as aggressive. Embellus is my favorite, just because they're so aerodynamic. They're so fast, but they're not aggressive. That doesn't mean that they won't fight. If you put them in the water, they're gonna fight. Okay. So what we, we've been able to do is take all these guys and mix and breed them. And you see this in Walmart and Target, oh, Target doesn't sell, Walmart doesn't sell anymore, but PetSmart, Petco, that's how we get these guys, okay? So you don't have to go get wild bettas and do this anymore, it's already here. And this is what they look like at PetSmart. Any of you have been to PetSmart? You look at the bettas, they're like dying. Okay, so. All right, so in my betta world, there are a couple ways to uh, recognize a betta. Number one, by what it looks like, the fins, and there's a lot of types of fins, and then the color of it. So, for example, um, Josiah's got long hair, so I could say, the longer hair, young man, that's long. That's how I would recognize that species. That's how they would do it better. And all of you see the red and blue bettas. Well, now we've got all these fancy colors. And along with fancy colors, we got ridiculous names. So whoever breeds a betta, they get to name that betta. Sometimes the name sticks, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll give you an example. There's this Thai guy, right? Uh, I kind of know him. He bred this guy, and he called him the Galaxy Better. I was like, dude, you know Galaxy? Stars are not blue, but he wants to call a Galaxy. So that stuck around. That stuck around. This guy, somebody bred, I don't know who bred this guy. They call it the Nemo Better. Nemo is not like that at all, okay? So, um, I decided I want to name a ridiculous betta too. So two years ago, I started breeding my own uh, style of betta. So as far as I know, no one out there has had a white, solid white betta with blue dots. So I've been working with this guy's bloodline for two years and still struggling with it. 
The only time you can claim that the bed is yours is if you take a female that looks like this and a male that looks like this and produce babies that are 50% looks like them or more. That makes sense? So if I take a boy and a girl that looks like this and I breed and only 20 comes out and the rest of the 200 that have different colors, that doesn't count. So I'm really close. I'm actually over. I got to where 60% are looking like this. And so I wanted to give it a ridiculous name. So I said, if Elsa made a betta, that's what uh, the betta would look like. So I decided to call this betta the frozen betta. Yeah. I don't think anybody cares, but. So what I've done is I, I'm a member of a betta, worldwide betta program. Every year I would ship this betta, is one of them that I would ship purposely, just to get the information out there. So far, nobody cares. So, um, I've been, again, I've been breeding bettas for a long time. Uh, for the past three years, I've been really focusing on what I call placket, what we call placket betta, which is the shorter tail betta. And these are my bettas that I, I've already sold these off uh, to stores. So I have verbal contract to some local stores that I sell these to. So, um, they're, they're basically different color bettas from different lines and genes. The reason why I breed these is number one, they sell. I breed for the demand. I don't breed because I think it's cool. I breed because they sell, that's it. So when they stop selling, there's a different species, I'll be breeding those species as well. Any given time, right now I have about 30, 40 big bettas um, that probably by August they'll be gone. And then right now I have a little bit over a thousand baby bettas that's being raised right now. I don't go over a thousand after doing it for 28 years. I don't have time for that. And just if you think you're gonna breed and make money, you're not, okay? Don't waste time. If you're gonna do this for a hobby, by all means do it. Don't give up high school and your education to do this, okay? You're just gonna be a low life. Don't do that, okay? Um, this is a part-time thing, something to keep you busy, keep you off your internet. And uh, I tell people, you know, aquarium, it doesn't matter if it's goldfish, tetras, or guppies, I can stare into my tank and watch my betta uh, just swim around and act like it's in nature. I could spend an hour just staring at it. And, and that's free entertainment. So here's a quick video. I'll kind of talk over the video of what bettas do when they breed. So my betta has already laid, the females already laid eggs. And the eggs are in the nest and the eggs just hatch. So I want you to keep a close eye on, on the babies. If you, you, see, you should see them swimming. So there's the male. Okay, you can see his head. He's picking up the babies. And he's putting the babies back in the nest. Can you imagine watching like 200 little nursery kids okay, and herding them to nursery class? That's what he's doing. So this is a week later, the babies can now swim on their own. And this is two months later, they're already that big. They're already about an inch and a half. So they're getting ready to be sold off to the stores. So uh, you can keep an eye on that, but there's a, you see how this one's kind of pale? Not every bed is gonna look, come out looking nice. And what I do is those that don't look nice, I um, give it to my friend who feeds it to his big um, flower worm, okay? Bishop Lowe. Yep. So you're saying you kill the babies that don't look good? <laughs> yeah, it's called, yeah, it's called coaling. You have to coal. There's no way you, just so you know, one batch of bettas, if you take care of the female, one batch of betta might lay around in a, from 200 to 500 babies. And if you don't, I've been doing this for a long time, but I already know which one's good and not good. The earlier you call, call means to get rid of the ones that you don't need. If you don't call early, 
you could be left with 500 betas that you're wasting your time with. And if you guys, when you guys get older, you understand that we're supply and demand, okay? You have too much of something nobody wants, now what are you gonna do with it? Right? So you call early and you do the humane thing by, they're gonna get eaten by it in the wild anyway, so you donate to friends who can either take care of it or they feed it to other predator fish. So don't flush it down and pull it. I think I don't know if that means you know, that's almost considered ethnic cleansing. Right? What? I, just I, can't, I can't hear you. So. I'm like, oh, joking. That's a, he's, he's, he's might consider that like ethnic cleansing. Yeah. 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 So, it, yeah. It, the people who hasn't bred betas yet, yeah, they, they are. Uh, I got people who approach me and say, well, that's unethical. They're like, you take the betas. <laughs> then they, 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 they don't understand it. So, just so you know, all the fishes in the fish stores that you go to, they all do that. Okay? Especially koi. So I, I used to have a big koi pond, and when I buy these koi from Japan, they do the same thing. Okay. So um, before I take questions, I want to let you know that I do have a YouTube video called Aqualo Aquarium. That that YouTube video is strictly just um, how I raise betas, just information about betas. Um, how I breed them, how long I've been doing it, just to help you guys out, or anyone out there that wants to know more about betas. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay. Yes? Uh, what's your most expensive betta fish? What's the most expensive betta fish? Yeah, what's your most expensive? Oh, my most expensive? I don't have any that's very expensive right now. Uh, I, the most expensive what I've sold was $175. And it was a, a, a giant species. It's, it's a big giant betta. Right. Um, any other questions? Yes. Are you a billionaire? <laughs> no, I'm a negative billionaire. <laughs> yeah, negative billionaire. Person, you... Is it ethical for us to take betta and put them in a tank and have like a rural rumble or like to fight each other? Uh, that is unethical. Okay. okay, you guys know what ethical and unethical means? Yeah, so taking betas and then fighting them uh, and then uh, uh, tearing them up. So uh, when I was a kid and we used to do that because we had no idea, okay? We didn't have books, we didn't, remember we didn't grow up with the internet, we had no idea. We just knew in our head that, oh, these are fighting fish, they're supposed to fight. And so, as I grew up and I understood better and I understood the aquarium hobby, I realized these are pets. Yeah, these are real pets. So, um, as you can see, my betas are not designed to, to fight. They're designed for um, your aquarium takes, to make them pretty. Any other questions? Yes? Can we have more than one beta in the same tank? You cannot, only females, okay? And not all the time. Males, you cannot, they will fight. You can have male with other fishes, okay? Uh, but you cannot put two males together, they will fight. Yes? So if you put the, so if, the, if they grew up together, uh, are they still able to be in the same tank or do they have to be separate? Yes, to a certain point, if two boys, brothers grow up together, eventually they're gonna fight. Eventually, in about three months, you better start separating them or they're gonna start. One's gonna overtake the other, but that, that one that takes over the other boys, he's gonna constantly just attack them. Um, so you, that's why bettas get jarred. Have you guys noticed that bettas aren't in one tank at the store? They're all in these little cups, okay? So females can stay together longer but eventually one of the females is gonna become mean and you're gonna to have to remove that female out. But generally, I keep most of my females together in one tank. Mm -hmm. it, Tyler, it, it's just natural, right? Like even now, I can't be in the same room as my brother's long and year because we'll fight, <laughs> you know, so you gotta keep them separate. Yeah, and he's the one that, they, he's the one they call. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a boy, yes. Um, are we able to put betas in a, a tank with other non-beta fish? You can, yeah. Because like, 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 I've seen them where 
you put them in there and then like like uh, some guppy little fish just keeps attacking them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you, you can, um, but you have to be careful, you have to pay attention to it because President Yang is correct. There's so many types of bettas. If the betta has a long tail, fancy long tail, he's going to swim so slow that the guppies and the tetras are going to get attracted to that little tail and keep nipping at it. Okay? So, or you might, just so you know, bettas are not all the same. They're just like you guys. They have attitudes. They have their own personality. I have a betta. That, that's actually my bet, and I hand feed it only, okay? If I throw it in there, he doesn't really eat it, but if I hand feed it, he'll eat it. So, uh, if you put a bed in there and the bed is really aggressive, oh, he's gonna attack all your goldfish and other ones too, he will. So you have to play it correctly. Here's what you do. We know bettas, if you don't know, I'll share with you. Bettas like to stay on top a lot. They have a special bladder. They're not like your other fishes, okay? Betters are, betters don't live in rivers, okay? They don't live in ponds, you guys. That's a rumor going around that they live in ponds. They, I mean, in, in, in puddles, they don't live in puddles. They live in ponds in, in slow moving creeks. So, because there's no oxygen in the water, betters are different. They have this built-in thing in their body that they can breathe water on top. So they can stay out of the water longer than normal fishes. What, what does that mean? Well, betters are on top. So if you're going to get a tank mate, get something that's on the bottom, like a like a catfish or something like that. Questions? Any other questions? Is this a, would you consider this a pretty expensive hobby? It can. And it cannot. So you could just take a betta and put it in a. I would recommend at least uh, two and a half gallon or larger and leave it in there by itself. Just a jar and him by it, himself in there. It is perfectly fine. Just remember, the smaller the tank, the smaller the jar, the more water changes you have to do. Just think of it this way. If, if uh, let, let's say we're in the swimming pool, right? And, um, Someone urine in the pool. Chances are he has not going to know. But you won't, you won't even taste anything. One, because of the chlorine. Number two, because that's going to get diluted, mixed up in there. Versus if it's a small tank, you'll probably start feeling something warm in the water and wonder what it is. So it's the same thing with the fish tank. And just so you guys know, fishes do pee. Okay? You only see the poop, but fishes do pee too. So, that creates poison in the water, so you have to change the water often. Yes? So how often would we have to change the water? It depends on how often you feed the fish. Okay, just, just kind of think about yourself too. The more I eat, the more I go to the bathroom, the more I flush the toilet. So when I flush the toilet, it's kind of like me changing the water in the, in the uh, fish tank. So. If you're lazy like me, go ahead, Chris. Oh, sorry. You might be answering that too, but do we need to change the water if you buy like a filter? Because I don't want to change the water. I'm pretty lazy. You, you do. You, you still need to change. Okay, let me. That's a great question. So here's what a filter does. Okay. Um, fish here poops and pee. You don't see it usually. It goes in the ground. It creates poison. And then um, the filter President Yang's talking about is supposed to suck up the, not the poop. The poop itself is okay. It's the stuff that comes out of the poop that you can't see in the water. That gets sucked up into the filter, and inside the filter, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there's some little taps that goes in there, slides in there, to filtrate water as it comes through. It's not cleaning the water. What it's doing is it's building bacteria in there. And you're like, ew, bacteria, nasty, germs. Uh-uh, bacteria's good. Guess what you got injected with COVID-19? Some fake bacteria to pretend that you're sick. So your body creates an immune system for it. The filter does exactly the same thing. It creates this nasty, slime stinking thing. That's good for you. So what happens is, as the water passes through there, 
the bacteria that you can't see are eating up those nasty poop. And the water comes out, not clean, but livable. No matter what, you have to change the water eventually. Okay. So two ways to do it to help you. Number one, live plants. Live plants. Um, if you guys are familiar with fertilizer, your, the fish poop also creates fertilizer for the plants, so the plants can eat some of the poison. Number two, President Yang said a filter helps it. Okay. Any other questions? There's more details to this. I have a whole video on YouTube that talks about why you need this nasty bacteria. And those of you that have fish tanks or will have fish tank in the future, if your fish tank starts getting all um, green, okay, don't worry, that's, that's good. That's a good thing. To us, it's not good because we don't like how it looks. But, but it's a good thing for the tank. Questions? Yes? So between the tank, you will have to build up all that bacteria again? So you don't, you don't remove those bacteria. So when you, when you clean the tank or you change the water, you only want to change about 10 to 15% of the water. So, so I would only drain 10% of the water, fill it right back up, and leave it alone. Now pay attention to your fish. If you're like, oh man, my fish looks like Petsmart's fish upside down. You better remove that fish and do a full water change. Okay. So, yes? So, I remember my dad had fish. He just let the water evaporate and just force them in. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that, that's a great way to do it. But you have to be, um, again, every situation is different. I'm assuming because your dad probably has a filter running. Yeah, and bacteria already lives in it. Now, if your filter is full of poop, gunk, pull it out, okay? And I don't like to use sink water. Do you guys know what's in sink water? Have you guys ever went swimming and swallowed swimming pool water? What does it taste like? Tell me. Besides pee. Chlorine. Chlorine. It's got chlorine and chloramine in the water. Guess what? If you go home and put your sink water and throw your fish in there, it's going to die. Guarantee you it's going to die. Okay? You can't do that, guys. You can't just turn your seat water and throw your fish in there. It's going to die. It's got chlorine. It's going to burn its eyes, burn its gills. Yeah. So, so uh, you want to treat the water before you put the water in there. And we'll talk about that in a bit if you want to. But yeah, so your dad's tank is already has bacteria, so he just fills it up. I have a couple of tanks that do that. I, just, I have plants in there that helps clean the water. And I test the water with these testers. So I know if there's poison, a lot of poison or not. Okay, I'm going to take a second and talk about water real quick. So you can't just put your holes in the water and throw your fish in there. Okay, you try that with bluegills, and bluegills will struggle. But bluegills are pretty hardcore; they'll survive it. But they will struggle. They will like go crazy in there because it's burning their gills. Okay? So a couple ways. When I was your age. I have no money to go buy chemicals because you have to put chemicals in the water and mix it up and then another chlorine's gone. When I was 12, 13 years old, 14 years old, I had no money to go buy that stuff. My mom wouldn't give me five bucks. So here's a hack. It's not going to solve everything, but it's going to help you start the hobby. Take a bucket, go to the backyard, shoot the water, Shoot it. I'm not talking about like put the hose in. I'm talking about like put your hand in it, squeeze it, shoot the water into the water so you see bubbles coming out. That's burning off the chlorine. And it's even better if you do it in the heat, in the sun. Shoot it and then let the water sit out there for at least two days. The chlorine's going to evaporate out of the water. And, and uh, the biggest secret I can give you is uh, tropical fish. I'm talking about fresh water. I'm not talking about salt water. Tropical fish like betas, guppies, um, goldfish doesn't count. Goldfish been domestically bred too much. I Meaning they've been they've been bred too much. They're not wild anymore. Um, any of you guys know discus? Okay, brother Joseph, no, he used to breed them. They love old water. So if you grab dirty old water in the backyard and you're like, ew, it's nasty. It's nasty to you. That's what they live in. 
they'll like that better than your clean water that you pour out. Okay? So, does that make sense? Okay? So that's one way to get rid of chlorine. Okay. And then there's something called chloramine in Sacramento. But I'm not going to talk about that. It's in your water, too. And it can also kill fish, but, but it, it's not as poisonous as chlorine. Any other questions? There's those, um, there's those little things at the store, pet store, that kill chlorine. Do you trust those? Like, does that work pretty good? I do. I, I do trust them. Um, the little chemicals, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I use, like, I, I use, I will use what I know works. I know that, like, API, that's a company that makes it, works. Um, you can buy them on eBay for if your parents have eBay accounts, ask them to buy it on there for dirt cheap. You don't need to buy the liquid. You can buy the, the uh, dried up. It looks like salt. It's basically salt, just so you know. Uh, you can buy them by the, the pounds for dirt cheap, for like 10 bucks. And you can share that with all your friends. It'll last you a whole year, maybe even two years. Yeah, versus a little bottle like this at PetSmart that would cost you like five bucks. And then you probably use it up in, I don't know, two, three months. Anything else? No? Does, it... Does the water temperature matter with those fish? Yep. So think this way. Where did this fish come from? Thailand. What is Thailand like? Snow. No. No snow in Thailand. It's warm, humid, and so you have to create that envir environment. Okay? They will die. Okay. Same thing with Trout. Have you guys seen trouts? Trouts all over America, right? Trouts live in cold, highly oxygenated water. If you go to a lake, um, think of a lake around here, Folsom Lake. You go ask Folsom Lake or go to Google and ask Folsom Lake, why do they not plant trout? Why do they not put trout in uh, the lake during the summer? When I'm out there swimming, I want to fish for it. Because the trout's going to die. It's too hot in California. But if you go to during Christmas, Go to Google and say, hey, are they putting trout in the water? Whoa, they put trout in Howe Avenue Pond by Howe? That ghetto pond, dirty pond? Yeah, because it gets real cold around here, so trouts can live in it. Okay? So you got to think about where they came from, and you got to mimic that in your tank. So yeah, you get to need heaters. Or you can crank up the heat in your house, and eventually your parents are going to yell at you and say, it's too hot in here. Okay. Any other questions? No? Last one, I promise. Um, if any of the boys wants to like proceed in this and they aren't able to afford heaters and different stuff like that, do you have any recommendations of where they can get that stuff? Maybe you want to look up somewhere? Yeah, so um, because of time, I won't go a lot in depth into it, but you, there's, there's, you're going to need your parents' permission, okay? You gotta get your parents' permission because um, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want President Yee to get in trouble for this. You gotta get your parents' permission. Number two, uh, you might stink up the house, and so if you learn how to raise it right, you won't stink up the house. Number three, you, you will have to spend some money because you're gonna need to buy equipment. So. Um, you can buy heaters, filters, stuff like that online. You can buy it on eBay, Craigslist. Craigslist is a little bit dangerous, but uh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, at your age, you should be asking your parents. And uh, I'm sure most of your parents would, would support you. It doesn't cost much buying used. Two, three dollars at most. The only added problem is that you're dealing with a small fish, usually with a smaller tank. So I would say about twenty dollars or so. You can get yourself a small filter, a small heater. Everything will be covered for about that range. Go on Amazon, go on eBay, and you should be fine. I can almost bet that a lot of you guys, you young men here, have asked mom and dad, "Mom, dad, can I get twenty bucks for Roblox?" Or you know something like that. And as I like, just spend that on a tank, and you're good. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Mr. Chance, young man, we're just you're sitting in front of an expert, so any, any questions on, on data, this is your chance. Yeah.
clarify, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, consider myself an expert. <laughs> 28 years. 28 ago. years of just experience of failing and fixing things. Yeah. See, here's the problem with with this hobby. There's really no real book that you can read about it. There's not. Just because there's no money to make. People only write. Just so you guys know, people write books because they're going to make money off of it. So no one writes books about this stuff. So you're just out there to learn your own. And there's YouTube videos occasionally that talks about it. And so I've been able to learn these, a lot of these things from mistakes that, that uh, I'm sharing some information with you. There's just too much I can't share with you. Not that I don't want to, there's not enough time. Yes? So how do you know when the email beta is ready to read? Okay. Um, Usually the females would, um, would usually the females would have, it depends on the color, usually the females would have stripes on the body and she would have a stomach full of eggs. You'll see the egg popping out right under the belly. It's a big white dot. Okay. And that doesn't guarantee that she's going to breathe them. It doesn't. Because I have a full YouTube video that talks about it, about how to breed and how come my female's not breeding? Okay. So I can't force you when you're 25 or 30 years old to marry a, another uh, YSA. If you guys don't get along, it's not gonna work. Okay. So yeah. Other questions? Do you wanna know what to feed them? Yeah, okay. So there's a gazillion types of food at the store. Okay. At the store you buy so much food. Um, you can make your own food at home, uh, but basically they eat um, bugs. So, have you young men ever been in your backyard? Uh, if you ever, usually I see it where there's water, it, or or you sink in your house. You see the little bug that jumps around. They're all small, white. They jump around. Yeah, kind of. Bettas love to eat those. Okay. Um, they eat, the story sells uh, blood worms. They're just like little worms. Um, they eat mosquito larvae. So if you put a bucket of water and throw some leaves in there, let the water rot in the backyard, mosquito will lay eggs, but your parents will get mad. But they'll eat those. Um, don't feed them too much mosquito larvae. Okay? They'll get sick eventually. So they don't eat uh, flakes? They, they are, they will only if they have to. Um, they are a protein food eater. Many of them not like goldfishes. Okay, goldfish don't eat anything. Bettas, they're looking for insects. They're looking for anything that moves. What about those pellets? They will too. If they're too hungry, they will eat it. So the pellets aren't made of protein? Uh, if you buy better pellets, they are. Oh. Yeah, if you buy better pellets, they're different from goldfish pellets. Better pellets have mosquito, they have bugs, they have worms inside of it. You just don't know, it just looks pretty, right? But prior to that, it's all just insects that they, they uh, put it together. And then they, you know what stories do is they, they mix in a lot of wheat. So, for example, you imagine you go to, you go to McDonald's and you say, hey, I want a hamburger, and they give you a piece of meat like this, but then your, your bun's like this big, and you're like, what a rip off! That's what they do with fish food. They put a little bit of meat in there, and then they put a bunch of wheat in there. Okay. So, what you want to do is, if you have a pretty beta that you want to keep healthy, you want to give it a variety of food. You just don't want to keep giving it pellets. How would you feel if your mom and dad just gave you rice all the time? Just rice. You'd be like, man, I want some hamburger, I want some pizza, right? Uh, how often should you uh, feed your beta? Um, generally, uh, generally, your adult bettas, you only want to feed it like two to three pellets at most in one day. Okay? I know when, when I first got my pet, when I was your age, I was like, man, he's hungry. And two minutes later, oh, he's not eating, let's do it again. Okay? And then what happens to uneaten food? Tell me. Poison. Chris, poison. You just made poison in the water. Okay? So, uh, if you have a lot of fishes, aquarium experts, not me, they say that if the fish doesn't eat it all up in two minutes, then you need to scoop out the, the food. It's going to create poison. It's going to sink and just create more poison for the fish. Okay. 
So I usually say, because my butters are all separated, I usually feed maybe two to three pellets. But uh, because I breed, because I do this as a hobby and a business, I don't do a lot of pellets. I, I feed them live bait, uh, food because it, it brings out their color and it builds them stronger and grows f way faster. So one of my babies in three months is able to then produce babies. Okay, so um, when I get ready to, when I know that my bed is getting ready to be shipped off to the stores, I start feeding the pellets. I starve it. Just so you guys know, bettas can go almost two weeks without food. Yeah, they can go two weeks without food. They'll be hungry, but they can do that. And um, so I will start feeding the pellets. They'll, they hate it, I can tell. But they have no choice but to eat it. Because you know why? The stores feed them pellets. If I don't prepare them for the store, the stores are not going to want anything to do with my bettas anymore. So I need to make sure my bettas are ready for them so the bettas are ready for their customers. Yeah. Other questions? Yes? Do they recognize owners? I don't know. I, I don't think they do. I, I, I've not had enough time to do that. Um, I don't think they do. I, I, I know they recognize tools, like, like I've had bettas where I would take the pen, a pencil, the back of the eraser, just because that pencil was always there, and I would mess around with it on the, on the uh, front, and the bettas would flare. Have you guys seen better flare? When they get angry, they flare up, right? They flare up their gills, their, their tails, and their fins gets all big, and their color gets real intense. So if they're, if they're this color, they might get real red. So, um, yep, they, they recognize tools. I know they recognize tools. Anything else? No? Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys for your time. Uh, before I go, I wanted to let you know that I brought each of you a better if you want to take one home. Okay? And uh, it's, it's in this box, and you can come up here, and actually, I'll hand it out, just, just because I don't want you guys buying for it. So whichever one you get, you can trade with your friends or take it home. If you take it home, your parents don't want you to keep it, um, let President Ying know, and he'll adopt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for another fish to feed it to. <laughs> so uh, again, thank you so much for your time and uh, for inviting me to be here. This was fun. Um, if you have questions, uh, you can shoot me an email, go to my YouTube videos. It's, it's not a channel to make money or anything. It's just a channel to me talking about my hobby, how, how fun it is, and the struggles that I have. Okay? Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.